Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Copper Hill Church virtual service for today. We're glad to have you worshiping with us today. Good morning. I'm Joanne Jones. This is Pastor Calvin, and we welcome you as part of our online family. And we just want you to know that God has a special message for you today that will help strengthen your walk with the Lord. We're glad to have you worshiping with us. And we're going to begin today with our call to worship. It's taken today from John chapter 10. And I invite you to respond re responsibly with my wife. Jesus said, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Well, the hymn that I've chosen for this morning is a well-known hymn, one that we're very familiar with. It's called, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And Joanne is going to accompany us on the piano. <laughs> a mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal is prevailing. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great, and armed with cruel hate. On earth is not his And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God hath willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him, his rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure, one little word shall fail him. That word above all earthly powers, no thanks to them abideth. The Spirit and the gifts are ours, through him who with us sideth. Let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also, the body they may kill, God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. All right, that's a great rousing hymn. It's a Martin Luther hymn, one that we all enjoy and celebrate with whenever we have a chance to sing it. Well, for our children's moments today, we have a little object lesson, and uh, Joanne's going to explain it to us. Yes. <clears throat> We are going to do a little experiment with eggs. Oh boy. So uh, I have two eggs here. They both look the same. Uh, but one of them is a boiled egg and one is not. But we don't know which is which. So what we're going to do is squeeze these eggs and find out which one uh -oh. is the boiled egg and which one is not. So just in case we get a little messy. I'm going to give each of us a bowl here and a napkin. Oh, okay. boy. Okay, and we each get an egg. This could get messy. So now the boiled egg, when if we squeeze it, uh, nothing, it'll just crack, okay? But if it's not the boiled egg, well, watch out. Well, so what could happen? Let's get our bowls ready here. Right. Okay, on the count of three, let's squeeze. One, two, three. Ah! Oh, I thought that was a surprise. What is this? Nothing happened. It just crushed. 
There's nothing in it. No yolk. Whoa, what did you do? Well, I didn't say that that one was raw. I just said one was boiled and one was not. That's true. That's what so you said. I didn't give you the whole story. What? Ah, uh, you did not give me the whole story. What I did was I I poked holes in either end of this egg and I blew the yolk out so it was just an empty shell. It looked like a real egg. A, a full egg, but it wasn't. So, little trickery there. Oh boy, yes, yes, a little I, slight. Aren't you glad it wasn't raw? Yes, I'm very glad that it wasn't raw. I could have yeah. had an egg all over me. This is too good of a tie for an egg on it. <laughs> so, you never know, words can be misleading. So, sometimes pastor's gonna talk about that later today. That yeah, that's right. We have to be careful of words that we hear because they can mislead us in the wrong direction sometimes. That's right. And not what they seem. That's right. Well, our scripture today is about temptation, and Judy's going to read for us. Judy's our council chair, and she's our reader today. Judy, welcome today. And she's reading from Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> Judy's still muted. <clears throat> You're muted. It, it's still, still muted. Oh, we're not working today. We're, we're not hearing Judy. Um, so, not sure why. So, uh, uh, maybe we can just read it. What is it, Matthew 4? Okay, until her sound comes up, let's start reading it. Looks like she's unmuted, but uh, apparently not. So this is, uh, this is the story of the temptation of Jesus when Jesus was in the wilderness. Because we're not able to get Judy in today. You are muted by host. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, so... Would you like me to read it, Pastor? Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> okay, verses 4 through 11. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said, Away from me, Satan. For it is written, Worship the Lord your God, and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, now it's time for our prayer time. Prayer is always a central part of what we do. Yes, it is. And, and we're so glad to be part of a prayer movement across the United States. And just a couple of days ago, I saw a post that people in the area of San Diego had band together and gone out to the streets to pray along the streets and the sidewalks. And I saw videos of 7,000 people praying along the sidewalks and along the road. 7,000 people. There were 135 churches involved. So I, I think that's a great way to show we're trusting in God and praying together. Wow, it's great to hear prayer movements going on. Yeah, so maybe that'll happen in other cities. We'll see. Uh, before the music for our quiet listening time today, 
I've chosen the hymn, I Need Thee Every Hour. And it, it just reminds us how much that we need God. And, and that and I hope you'll use this time uh, to thank God for all that he's done for you and for all the strength and the peace that he gives you. Father, creator of all that is, shepherd of all your children, we open our hearts to your love and we come before you with praise. Yes. Your mercy is beyond our comprehension and your faithfulness is the rock of our believing. We continue to intercede for those who are on our hearts today. Currently in our nation's history, there are so many things to bring to you as we intercede for others. We continue our prayers for those on the front lines of our country's battle with COVID-19. We intercede on behalf of doctors and nurses and first responders. Please continue to bless them with physical strength and emotional courage and comfort in their trials. We continue to pray for our country's leaders May President Trump and Vice President Pence and members of Congress and the Supreme Court have guidance from you. Yes. May they re not rely on their own wisdom, but look to you for direction. We continue to pray for the search for effective treatments for COVID-19. Please grant success that suffering may be alleviated. We also pray for the expedited development of effective vaccines against this, against this virus. We pray for our state leader, Governor Ned Lamont, and for our local leaders like Tammy Zawistowski and Jim Hayden. The Lord give them wisdom and guidance in the decisions that they make. We continue our prayers for the current election cycle. From a human point of view, it presents many challenges but you are never surprised by our situations. Oh Lord, we pray for your sovereign will to be evident and unhindered, bringing into office men and women who live rightly and uphold righteousness, integrity, and peace while in office. We pray today for friends and neighbors who are not doing well in this COVID-19 crisis. Reports inform us that drug and alcohol abuse, spouse and child abuse, and suicide are all up during this time. Oh, Lord, help us. Meanness seems more evident in the public and on the, me in, on the media as well. And when we, when we see these things, we're reminded again of how much more we need you, dear Jesus. Mm -hmm. We need your love in our hearts. We need your cleansing spirit to weed out our wickedness. We need to be renewed day by day because we are walking with you. Oh God, we plead for a revival of personal faith in our land. We also pray for that day soon when we will be able to meet together at church again and worship you as a gathered body of Christ. It pains our spirits to know that the house of God dedicated to your name is empty week after week. And though we understand the safety reasons for this time of being apart, we also pray for it to end soon by your grace. 
Now we pray also privately for individuals who are on our hearts today. May they sense your care. May they rest their hearts in you. And Lord, please hear our prayers as we pray together now as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, our church's COVID-19 planning group will continue to uh, oversee our, the developments uh, toward our reopening following the guidelines of the bishop. And maybe, uh, meanwhile, we'll just keep meeting online as we are now via Zoom and Facebook Live, and we'll let you know if we have any further dates to announce. So far, things have sort of been on hold by the governor and the bishop as well. We've taken steps to prepare for a continued streaming of services once we reopen, so we're looking forward towards that day. Uh, please don't hesitate to call Judy or Robert or myself if you have any prayer requests or special needs. We want to be as helpful as we can during this time. And this coming week, we'd like to wish a happy birthday on Tuesday, July 21st to Sarah Oliver and also to Cameron Schantz. And the next day is Cal Schantz's birthday. So happy bir birthday to all of you. And anniversaries uh, this coming week also is Kelly and Carl. So we wish you a happy anniversary. And to all of you out there who have birthdays, we wish you a, a great week. And what about that Bible study that you're starting not today, right? Yes, we'll be doing an online Bible study and more about that later. All right. So, and we also want to thank Corey and Jonathan for their help behind the scenes today. Thank you guys. Well, we also appreciate your financial support and we're thankful to have uh, the capability of e-giving and re the record keeping and the communications uh, possibilities that come with Breeze. And now through our church website, you can give, there, there's our church website address, uh, www.copperhillchurch.us. You, there's a donate button there that will allow you to give to our church. You can also give by text at 860-579-6338. The first time you do, they will ask a few questions, but after that, you can just text them out. It's so easy. By, you can also give by mail at Copper Hill UM Church. Send your uh, contribution to Box 422 East Granby, Connecticut, 06026. So we appreciate your continued generosity. And you can give to different uh, funds uh, through these ways as well, either through our um, website or by mailing in your contributions. You can give to Copper Hill Church Support, which is the main way, the, sort of the default way, or you can give to uh, co the Coronavirus Relief Fund through UNCOR. You can give to the Online Services Support Fund um, or through our ongoing electricity fund. There they are, the four giving choices that you have. And remember, you can access that through the website donate button. Uh, there's a little drop down there that allows you to access those. Or you can send your, your mail uh, contribution uh, designated for any one of those four. So thank you for your continued help for our church. Yes, well, our thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Our me. message today is called Tactics of the Enemy. Um, remember that illustration of yes, the eggs that Joanne egg. said? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it shows us that things are not quite always what they seem. Uh, Satan tries to deceive, see, deceive us with misleading appearances and misleading words. And that's what Jesus discovered in his encounter with Satan in the wilderness. Jesus saw through the deceptive tactics of our spiritual enemy. And we learn so much from the narrative of the temptations of Jesus. 
And we learn how we can also discern the tactics of Satan in our lives. As Charles Stanley put it, we know from Jesus' temptation experience in the wilderness that Satan will try many tricks to convince us to listen to him instead of to God. And the Apostle Peter warned us that the devil is always on the prowl, seeking to get in a roar that instills fear and confusion. We admire in this, 